is the self itself that is identifying with ego hmm? and then temporarily coming under this type of spell or hypnosis that I am the ego. And so because of that, all this suffering comes into the world and uh, really untold suffering, so much aggression, so much fear. If you understood who you are, if we understand who we are, then this this suffering would end. If the unique, real self is the only true, why do you bother? He asked me actually, why do you bother listening to and answering to all these unreal selves or egos addressing to you? <laughs> if the unique, real self is the only true, and then underlining, why do you bother? Underline listening to the answering listening to and answering to all these unreal selves or egos addressing you does it really matter that i as ego suffer it matters for me but as he is unreal why bother he's asking then there is some directions to jinji I don't. I don't know if it's. I, do, I don't know if it's for me or not to, to go to Jinji. Uh. Roberto, if the unique real self is the only true, why do you bother listening to and answering to all these unreal selves or egos addressing to you? Because I don't see any unreal self. I don't see any unreal self. Does it really matter that I as ego suffer? Does it matter that I as ego suffer? Yes, it does matter. I'm hearing these things saying, people saying, yes, well, you know, it's just the ego that suffer, uh, you know, it's not true. But I don't trust this talk. I don't trust that talk. It's easy to say that when we are in the Advaita Cafe, speak like this. But does it matter if I ego? Yes, it does. As long as there is ego, it's because you believe in it. If you don't believe in it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't anything more. I mean, truly, if you've seen, it doesn't. More than I don't believe in it, because that's only another mental idea also. Even the ones I don't believe in the ego also is uh, very much sometimes the ego, meaning ego belief is there. It is the self itself that is identifying with ego, hmm? and then temporarily coming under this type of spell or hypnosis that I am the ego. And so, because of that, all this suffering comes into the world, and uh, really untold suffering, so much aggression, so much fear. If you understood who you are, if we understand who we are, then this this suffering would end. If the unique real self is the only true, and it is, why do you bother listening to and answering all these unreal selves addressing to you? Out of the compassion of realizing one's true nature and knowing you are the same. If you see someone you love uh, out of uh, wrongly identifying something, just in the same way that sometimes you uh, imagine somebody, some, someone is doing something which is not true, but because you believe it, you believe it into existence, and you will suffer your projection. You will suffer it. Blood, sweat and tears suffer it. 
And one who loves you does not want to see you suffer unnecessarily. He doesn't say, oh, but it's just a dream, forget about it. No. Because although it's a dream, the suffering also is a dream, you see. But that state is real sorrowful. Who would want to see? And when one sees that the same root, when I speak with you, I don't speak with you as other individuals or something, but as consciousness, reminding consciousness in other bodies, in the belief that it is not quite what it really is, reminding and pointing out the truth, so that it awakens to its constitutional truth, awakened from the dream of suffering. This is why it's going on. Uh, and does it really matter that I, as ego, suffer? I have just answered that one. It matters for me, but as he as he is unreal, why bother, is he? If that was the attitude, there would be no Jesus, there would be no Buddha, there would be no Ramana, there's no Papaji. These beings, they saw how much pain, how much hardship, unnecessary to some degree, necessary to some degree. The pain must happen also. It's part of the play of awakening, recognition. All of this is going to happen, you see. And also, they themselves feeling the compassion to respond to questions also had to happen. It's also part of that play. And that some would listen to them and others would listen to others is also part of the play. In the time of Buddha, in the time of Jesus, there were other teachers also teaching other things. They didn't have all the disciples. Some other, other disciples, other things was going on as well. They didn't mind. They just spoke what they, from where they are, from the truth they saw. And what was truth endured over all these years, centuries, 2,000 years, 2,500 years later, that this truth is prevailing, you see. So why do you listen to all of these, knowing that only the true Self exists? Why do you bother, you see? Because knowing that only the true Self exists, I found it's the only thing worth really finding out. And everybody is trying to find out so many other things. It says, but if you recognize at least that you are suffering, some people they don't even know they are suffering. They haven't come to that state. Then others they could discover, they are, I am actually suffering somehow, because everything I do, somehow underneath it, some pain, some sorrow. How can I get out of this suffering? Suppose there was no one to go and talk to. So, the speaking satsang is only the Self conversing with itself, about itself. It is in your mind that you believe in maybe ego or the mind, not in my mind. It's not there. And so then a real conversation can happen. If two disbelievers are speaking, then what the hell? Hmm? But if you speak with someone, you know, somehow they must be able to guide you or you guide something out of the trouble, out of the confusion. Does it really matter that I, as ego, suffer? Does it matter that I, as ego, suffer? Yes, it does matter. I'm hearing these things saying, people saying, yes, well, you know, it's just the ego that suffers, uh, you know, it's not true. But I don't trust this talk. I don't trust that talk. It's easy to say that when we are in the Advaita Cafe, speak like this.